guys, welcome back to another episode of uh, Stabjet Auto. Steve from Stabjet. Today's episode, guys, do you have a V6 Commodore Turbo? Are you looking at engineering it, making it all legal, but you're not quite sure, you don't have an idea on what it's going to take to actually make it legal? I'm going to show you, I'm going to share with you, I'm going to show and share with you my learnings. They're expensive learnings, and I've had to do things quite a couple of times, but guess what? I'm going to save you guys a lot of cash and uh, I'm going to direct you to how to go about making it all legal. Alright, so stick around. Alright guys, so I just want to make a quick disclaimer, right? Um, I did this procedure 10 years ago. Alright, so I'm not up to date with any new rules and regs. However, okay, I'm fairly confident that what I will show you and what we will go through in this video it's going to be your ticket to freedom. So we're going to get stuck into the brakes. Alright, so there's going to be a brake test that's going to be conducted. You're going to need to pass it. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys what I've done and this pass with flying colours. Alright. Alright guys, so now I'm going to show you guys the brake upgrade. What my system consists of. VT or VX SS calipers and rotors to suit. There you go. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have a braided line. Then we move over to the booster. So this is a VS plastic booster with a VT master cylinder. Now I can't quite remember if I used a different reservoir. Um, but uh, anyways, VS booster, VT master cylinder, had to read flare a couple of ends or as you can see, I've put some AN dash fittings to adapt and um, yeah, so that's that. VXSS front caliper rotor setup with VT master cylinder and VS plastic booster pass with flying colors. All right, so the brakes were definitely a must. Um, your engineer is 100% gonna wanna brake upgrade. So um, yeah, factor that into your costs or your build. All right, moving on from there. Um, next one, we're gonna go over clearance. So you must have clearance everywhere. All right, so dump pipe, exhaust, wiring, all that. You need your clearance. I believe it was like 10 mil, or you might you had to put your hand in there, 15 mil, or something like that, with the exhaust to chassis um, and so forth. So yeah, I needed that clearance. Now the way that my setup is sorted, I've got clearance everywhere. Uh, clearance everywhere. I don't know if you can see it, but anyways, plenty of clearance. Everywhere. There you go. All right. Now, if you have any um, wiring, um, so I know with the standard uh, battery setup, usually the wiring runs somewhere through here. You're going to need to put it in like a heat sleeve if it's close to the crossover pipe. So keep that in mind. Any wiring or anything like that, it's pretty close. Heat sleeve it up. Um, I believe I have some heat sleeve on. If you can see, it's just actually maybe we might be able to get it. I don't know if you can see it, but it's pretty close to the dump. That's the earth. Sorry. So my earth down there is pretty close to the dump. You can see it somewhere over there. I've got it in that speed flow, heat wrap, resin, fiberglass, heat stuff, um, yeah, cool. So, so that's clearance. Alright guys, so we're going to go over intercooler piping, okay. If you're cutting any holes through any body panels, then um, this is what we're going to need to do. Um, intercooler piping, if you're going to cut through any of the um, engine bay 
any panels, you're going to need a replacer with double metal. Okay. Otherwise, um, in my case here, you'll see that um, I've actually welded. I've welded a tube, so three-inch pipe that goes um, to this panel and it goes straight down. So there's a three-inch pipe. If you do decide that you want to cut a hole, okay, and you want to replace it with double metal, right? You can leave it um, open. It just needs to be double metal and like a pinch weld around there or some sort of like a seal around it. Um, no sharp edges, so no exposed sharp metal. All right, moving on, air filter. So with an air filter, you're gonna to need to have it in a box. So it needs to be enclosed in a box. I'm gonna show you a picture of my old combination. I actually still have this enclosed air box for a front mount setup. So if you are interested, hit me up. I'm happy to move it along, obviously at a price, but um, I'm gonna post up my setup for my air filter box. Um, here all right so you're gonna see the air filter or the how the box was um, so it was fully enclosed and then I had uh, my fuse box back then so um, it recesses around it's notched for the fuse box or that um, fuse holder there so um yeah it actually tidied up that whole corner and it used to get mad cold air um, in there pull the headlight out and it was mint so that's if you're interested let me know hit me up happy to sell it it's probably to suit a front mount setup um, and, and that guard because the top plate the top panel um, it actually mounts through the two guard bolts so yeah you're gonna need to enclose your air filter the next PCV all right so it needs to be recirculating all right and it needs to be functional or functional yeah functional you want to have rocker covers all right all good into your catch can all right now i'm venting to the atmosphere no no all right for engineers this here unscrew it line back into here all right pcb done so another thing, make sure you got a plumbed back blow off valve, okay? Um, you need a blow off valve. Again, these are all things that can be taken off as soon as you want to and then put straight back on should you need to go through like the pits or anything like that. All right, now we're moving on to emissions. This is where I had to pay quite a bit. All right, so three tests down at Firepec. Um, they're a facility in Port Melbourne um, So What happened here is the engineer is going to be like um, We need to make sure that it's meeting current emissions. So a couple of things um, You're going to need the five gas test or the IM240 test have a look into that um, there's a I, I Believe it's ADR 3700. I did research that couple weeks ago when I was planning on making this video so ADR 3700 is the emissions guidelines that your car will have to meet to make things simple for you because I did fail this three times okay now the first time um, it was because of the cat and the tune the tune was fucked and the cat it wasn't heating up and you've got like um Hydrocarbons, NOx, H or what? Well, yeah, so you've got HC hydrocarbons, NOx, um, and then some other oxygen or other content in that five gas analyzer, whatever it is. So I failed, I think my NOx um, was like through the roof. And then I spoke to the guy, so that was, so that was a thousand bucks there, my first test. I had a chat with the guy, I'm like, hey, like, you know, how do we go about, like, because he actually said, he goes, it's through the roof. Um, and he goes, it's something to do with your cat. Your cat's not maybe heating up. It's not in the right spot. So we had the cat, like, under there. Um, we made another pipe um, to come up a bit. And I had the cat, like, practically alongside the, um, the gearbox uh, bell housing. And... Um, yeah, so we brought moved the cat up. Um, so this is for the second time around. So we moved the cat up, 
Um, I ended up taking it on a dyno with uh, a shop that had um, an old LPG setup. So if um, you have any workshops in your area um, that have LPG um, or did LPG conversions, they would have had the five gas analyzer. Uh, pays to probably go to that shop and they can do like a brief check with you uh, to see if you're going to meet the emissions of ADR 3700. All right, so we did that second time, and long story short, um, I was shattered because I just had the car painted that time and he scratched the bar with um, his tester that went on the exhaust or the, the exhaust tips. I was shouted, he took like, I don't know, practically that was free. But anyways, that would have been another thousand bucks that I failed. Um, the reason why we failed that is it was pretty close, but it was still off and it was to do tune related. It was because I had a cam, all right? So when I spoke to him the second time around, um, what he described, any changes like camshafts, opening up the rings, uh, um, it was pretty difficult getting a camshaft engineered uh, or pass the emissions test. Anyways, third time lucky, I was this, this was the make or break. If I didn't pass the emissions test, that's it, it's done. I'm, I'm over, I'm gonna reshell the car, that's that. Third test, um, again, we took it back on the diner with the five gas and we passed it. So third time's a charm, uh, another thousand bucks. So there you go, that's 2000 bucks and potentially what was gonna be 3K um, in those emissions tests. And guess what? I had to use 98 fuel. We're in Melbourne, uh, Victoria and VIPEC at the time, or emissions tests at the time in Victoria, didn't allow for E85. No, there was no testers or no calibrators down. I believe VIPEC was the only facility. Toyota had just shut down, but Toyota used to run um, emissions tests for all cars um, back in the days, but um, I just missed out on being able to do that. So um, VIPEC couldn't facilitate E85 uh, analysis so I had to put the car on 98 this thing is dedicated E85 if it was E85 I reckon I would have passed it maybe the second test maybe even the first test but um, yeah uh, I had to put the car on fuel unleaded and that was the big piss off for me didn't even make sense at the time right uh, ethanol is so much better for the environment I'm not sure if you can run or if there's any testers or um, if Vipex still around, I'm not sure, but uh, if you can find a tester that will test based off E85 content, I reckon you're gonna be one up on me, and uh, I reckon it should be pretty smooth sailing, uh, maybe even with a camshaft. But um, if you haven't put a camshaft in, and you just wanna get the car engineered as a V6 turbo, then um, keep, it, keep the engine standard, stock standard, just put the turbo on, and uh, make sure you've got like a cat. So I use the XR6 turbo cat. Uh, I'm not sure if they're the same as XR6, but uh, it was an XR6 turbo cat. I remember going into the exhaust place and that's what they put in there. Um, it met some particular standards. So he said this should be fine. And that's that. So emissions test is going to be the trickiest test. And that's what's gonna probably eat into your wallet and make sure you find the right person that's going to do that test for you um, or make sure you call around make sure they've done um, like your tuner has done these types of tunes to meet emission standards so that way you you're on the forefront all right cool your wastegate system internally gated pass Externally gated to the atmosphere, fail. Externally gated, plumbed back, pass. No brainer for me. I was always intending on plumbing it back. Don't have any intentions of doing a wastegate external screamer. Sounds like shit, hate it. But hey, it's your combo, it's your, your car. You do whatever you want. But anyways, you're not gonna pass 
uh, engineer's cert with an external dumped out to the atmosphere. ECU wise, I was able to get this engineered with a Haltech. Um, the way to go about that, the ECU needed to be locked and couldn't be modified. So at the time, the emissions test actually asked me and I think they must check it. So that way when they sign off on the results or whatever, um, yeah, it can't be modified. And yeah, something to do with that. Anyways, um, I just locked the ECU and you couldn't modify any of the tunes or anything like in the base maps or whatnot. So that was a pass. Engineer was happy with that, signed off on that as well. Um, if you're going like a, um, a aftermarket box, I've got a glide in this, so your gear indicators need to work, or if you've got like the IC7 or a dash, um, you can plug it into that, and as long as there is a gear indicator, you're mint. Hey, I'm Steve from Stavjet. Don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. I'm out.